The Super Speedway Podcast is a Dream Bigger Media production. For news, photos, show notes, and information about advertising on the podcast, visit www.thesuperspeedway.com. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Super Speedway. It just got wrecked for no reason. Just dumb, dumb racing. Just dumb moves being thrown out there. Guys that don't know what they're doing, so they throw crazy ass blocks. And it's just ridiculous. We shouldn't be wrecking all these cars. I'm not Tony Stewart. I'm not as smart as he is. He can say a lot better than I could. But this is just dumb. It's just dumb, James. Welcome to episode 140 of the Super Speedway Podcast. Recorded Wednesday, February 12th, 2020. I'm your host, Derek Young. And I am joined, as always, by my co-host, James Cush. James, how's it going? Dude, that should be the new name of the podcast. <laughs> it's, it's just dumb. Just dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brad Keselowski, oh. not real happy with his teammate after the uh, Bush clash this weekend. Uh, of course, talking about Joey Logano without naming Joey Logano and uh, fired up. Asked if he was going to talk, uh, talk to Joey about it afterwards. And he says, I'm going to Disney Disneyland or Disney World. And then uh, <laughs> they, went, they both went to Disney World. <laughs> yeah, Joey, Joey was asked about it. And Joey says, well, I'm going to Disney World, too. So I guess I'll talk to him there. <laughs> ridiculous uh, good stuff teammate feud right yeah 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 that's always good you know what people are fired up after the clash i mean just one person but at least somebody's fired up after the clash yeah i think so i think that's good it's a little more relevant than last year i guess i mean last year we just had i mean jimmy won a race after it rained after a wreck and that was it i mean i went back and i checked the show notes from last year and i mostly did it because i was pulling the predictions that we did last year so we could do the same ones this year and uh you know, the the notes were that it was a pretty ho-hum race, and we didn't really care much about it. So yeah. um, I don't think we can call this one a ho-hum race. <laughs> it, it wasn't ho-hum. That's that's for sure. That is for sure. So Eric Jones survives to win in a car that was very reminiscent of the one that Terry Labonte won, back at, won with back in, what, 96, 95? Yeah. When, uh, when Earnhardt wrecked him at the line at Bristol. David um, Pearson? Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, except that, you know, like, Labonte's car wrecked at the line and it didn't wreck, get sort of repaired and go back out and race and then win a battle of attrition all day for, uh, for Eric Jones. Yeah. what do we have? We had five cars finish, I think four in the lead lap or or six cars finish. And yeah, I'm showing six cars finished, uh, five on the lead lap. Yeah. I didn't even pull the results up because there's really not much of a point we can count. There's not much. It's a lot of red. There's a lot of red. (laughs) Um, yeah, it's, it's not pretty. All that really matters is Eric Jones wins the race because he was fortunate enough to have two things. He had a teammate and he had a teammate who was a lap down and couldn't win. <laughs> and just pushing him. Yep. That's yep, it. That's it. That's all it took. Eric Jones gets the win with, uh, I mean, you know, we talked about like the Chevys last year, they had the, the pointed nose. Well, Jones had a pointed nose too. It was just pointed the opposite direction. Yeah, it was kind of like up in the air, point or you, down or something. It was smushed. You could have fit a Chevy nose backwards into the front of that Toyota nose. Uh, it, there was so much room in there. It was basically a parachute. You texted me that it's going to make a great race win diecast. I don't know how they're going to do it. <laughs> I don't know. They probably can't do it. I don't know if you could do a mold on it. Right. So let's yeah. talk about this race, James. We won't need to spend a whole lot of time on it. It's not that important of a race. I mean, to be honest, it's not an important race at all. But what what do we what do we think of it? Was it a good race? Was it a bad race? Do do we care? I mean, what what do you think? I you know one my one takeaway is um, yeah. Well, and you and I were texting because we were both watching it live, which right. that doesn't happen <laughs> super often. I know. Um, but. Uh, the thing that I took away is these drivers just, they don't care anymore about no. how many blocks they're throwing. They really just throw them and the hell with it. And, and especially in a race like this where points don't matter. Um, it, it's very, I don't know. It's been a digression in this part of speedway racing for the last few years. And, and this was just at full, full display so here, on, on Sunday. Here's the thing I want to talk about with that though. So Brad's pissed off at Joey for the block that caused the wreck. Everybody's talking about the block, too much block and all this block. And you need to stop blocking block. And that wasn't a block that caused that wreck. Joey blocked Kyle, but Kyle drove through him after the block. There yeah. was, he didn't block Kyle. Kyle just turned down and turned through the left side of his car. And yeah, it was a series of series of blocks that led to a front. Well, 
I, I, Kyle Busch is always on the edge of frustrated. Everybody wants so. to blame Logano for that wreck. That was Kyle's fault. I'm sorry. That, well, and I'm a Kyle I, fan, but that was Kyle's fault. Yeah. Well, and I'm talking about the whole race. Yeah, though. It was exactly. So much. I mean, it, I mean, especially when we got towards the end, there was hardly anybody running, and we were just wadding cars up left oh, and right. We're going to see it again this Sunday. I guarantee it. It's, it's not going to be that level of a junkyard, but we're going to see block. Eric, I have an idea we'll see a big it. wreck because of a block. I have an idea to fix it. I yes. think this is the best idea I've ever thought of. Okay. Just take take the seatbelts out of the cars. <laughs> that's what, put, that's what Brad put said. Blocking. <laughs> I mean, <sighs> seriously, we, these guys have no fear. It's like they're racing in a video game, and they just – it doesn't matter to them. It's its strange. So here's a question these I have cars, for you because this they, the, the blocking – Which is good. Which yeah, is good. that's the thing. The blocking thing is one of the things I have on the notes, and I, I noted you know, blocking seems to be an issue. Is there a solution? And, and my next question after that is does there need to be? I mean, really, who who cares if they're – okay, so here's the thing. At some point, these guys are either going to learn and they're going to stop throwing these impossible blocks or they're going to keep wrecking until they learn. And yeah, so, you know, you and I talked after or we were talking through text after the race about how somebody needs to, you know, step up and, you know, put their foot down like Stuart would or whatever and, and teach somebody a lesson and, and and put an end to this. But I think they have all seen the consequence. And if they're willing to take that consequence, then. I mean, who cares? I guess everybody's fine. We yeah. get an exciting wreck. I mean, keep it's doing it. If you got, I, I, I mean, it's, re- it's dumb, yeah. but keep doing it. <laughs> you know? It's too much, too much wrecking, and it's you know, it's and it hurts the it hurts the product at the end of the day because we all know, we all know what's going to happen on Sunday and when the Daytona 500 kicks off. They're going to ride around mm-hmm. for 150 laps, and then it's just going to become a yard sale out there. It's going to be a demolition derby for two and a half hours to get through the last portion of the race and it's going to suck. And yeah. I'm not looking forward to that. I'm not looking forward to that part of the race. Yeah, we do it four, I, we I do just it four wish, times a year. I know, but I just wish that, <laughs> that the talent, the talent level in the cup series is not, boy, this is diet. This is going into a place. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to go, <laughs> but the talent level of the drivers in the cup series is way down. Yeah. And we don't hey we don't have some of the guys out there like you said we don't have a steward out there to put his foot down, to kind of straighten up some of this mess that we have, and it's just it's not going to go away. It's just this is what super, this is what speedway racing is going to be. I just I Moving don't forward. you know I don't think that anything's different. I I watched a race. Um, I don't remember what race it was, but it was uh, it was Daytona or Talladega, and it was. Jeff Gordon blocking. It was before this was, I think after Earnhardt was killed, but before they created the yellow line rule and he's blocking people down to the grass. We've had wrecks yeah. because of blocking before. The only thing that's changed is the fact that the cars are bunched up more than they used to be. And the cars are more even than they used to be. Or What I mean is instead of having groups of five and 10 cars here and there scattered throughout the field, we've got a pack of, you know, 38 cars that 30. are all on top of each other. Or in the case yeah. of the clash, you know, you had 18 cars that were all together because nobody was losing the draft because they were too good. And that's, yeah. I think, the only thing that's changed. We've been blocking like this forever. The closing rates are quicker, which, you know, we, that's what we wanted. We wanted we wanted horsepower. We wanted response. The, you have to keep in mind, too, these guys are still learning this package. Yep. This is the fourth race we've had on a restrictor plate track. That's not restricted plate anymore. These are the only two tracks. Daytona and Talladega are the only two tracks in the entire series that with this new aero package gained horsepower. Every other yeah. track lost horsepower or kept the same amount of horsepower. And that's why you saw stuff like that restart accident where it looked like there was oil on the track because it was a it was a restart that mattered that. OK, uh, let me t- let me put it this way. It mattered less than the other restarts in that it didn't really matter whether you made it or not versus a, a points paying race. If you wrecked no big deal. Right. So they all hit the throttle harder than they were, they've ever done before. And they didn't expect the response, which was the whole outside line spun out and wrecked. Yeah. So I don't and know. Daytona's I, not- notoriously slick to also. I mean, Daytona is a handling track, whether people think it is or not, it, right. it matters. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. I just, I don't think the blocking's gotten any more than it ever has been. If you go back and look at races from, I mean, shoot, look at what was, was it 79 when they had the wreck on the backstretch? Well, how, what was that caused by? That was caused by blocking. Slam, 
slamming. Yeah. It, it yeah. was blocking it. We've had it since the seventies. So I don't think anything's changed. I think just the packages have changed personally. I don't, I, I think that it's the package. It's the, it's the closing rate. It's the number of cars. Um, and you're right. I mean, we're going to see the same thing on Sunday and, and we're going to see, you know, you mentioned that we're going to see a bunch of people. It's more prevalent now, you know? Right. Like that's my, I think that's my, that's my thing. I mean, yeah, we've seen it, but now it's every time we go to a speedway, it's, it's the same. Right. It's, it's a, it's just exactly. a wad, you yeah, know? It is. And, and I mean, and you, you brought up a lot of good points though. You did. There's I mean, a lot that goes good. into the fact that, you know, we've, we've not, I mean, knock on wood, it's been, it's been awesome that we haven't, but we haven't lost a driver in an accident you know, in a decade and, or longer than a decade. And so these drivers are a lot more fearless than they used to be. There's less yeah. risk to make these it's moves. A video. Exactly. It's, it's racing. Yeah. 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 So the consequence is we get a couple more ridiculous wrecks like this, but the advantage is that we're not hurting drivers. So, Hey, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, and again, yeah. you know, we do it, we do it four times a year, five times if you count the clash. I don't care. I mean, I, it's, it's entertaining to me. I would, t- even if I hated it, I would tune in to watch it because I would laugh at it like I did this week. I mean, I texted you or I put on Twitter, actually. <laughs> these are the best. Remember, these are the best drivers in the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they can't even restart without wrecking. Yeah. So I tweeted, I tweeted out, uh, we were busy talking about fuel mileage the entire yeah. race. Well, I'm going to get to that. I, I, and I tweeted out, you could see it coming. I'm like, well, we've been talking about fuel mileage the entire race, and it's not going to matter in about three laps. And I think two <laughs> laps later was one of those big wrecks, and it was just like you can, <laughs> you can just see it. It's kind of like it's happening. It's not the, the fuel mileage definitely did not matter at that point. So here's my problem with this race. This is an all star race, basically. We should never, ever ever have to think about fuel mileage in an all-star race. No, oh, it was terrible. That caution flag was so stupid. That I, lap 25 caution. I like the fact though, that at least, um, at least the, the teams who tried to outsmart things outsmarted themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hate, you know how I feel about team orders in this whole yep. thing. And, Oh, but there I, weren't any team orders, James. No, yeah. Well, I was I was rooting against Chevrolet as hard as I've ever, and I d- typically do not root against any Chevrolets. Right. But I'm man, I rooting that they would fail. Well, the, I was like, you jerks. The engineers over engineered, and the, Good. the guys who count, the, you know, figure the fuel mileage didn't think about the fact that the cars have to go slower to not use the fuel. And yeah. So here's my question: to, any changes? I mean, should we change this race? Should we get rid of this race? Are we okay with this race? What do you think? And if the teams want to keep building cars for it, build them up. Let's keep racing. I'm fine with this race. I don't <laughs> care. Let's run it every year. I think anybody who I am totally against reducing races, um, length of races. Yes. But cutting races, I am against. Um, I think we've made that pretty clear in this podcast multiple times that I don't want to shorten the schedule. I don't you want and I, fewer races. You and I just, yeah, you and I disagree quite a bit on yes, that one. Very yeah. much so. Which is fine. Which is fine. Yeah, we're but, allowed. We're allowed to disagree from time to time. But here's the deal, and I know it's it's a new season, so I'm going to cheerlead Dale Junior a little bit again. But if you guys listen to Dale Junior's podcast this week, he sums it up a hundred percent. I one hundred percent agree with him. This race started as a 20 lap shootout to celebrate pole winners from the past season. If there were six pole winners over the past season, they started six cars. If there were 25 pole winners over the past season, they started 25 cars, but they ran 20 laps and that's it. If you pay attention to this race Sunday, what did we see? We is a 75 lap race. They rode around until 18 to go. And then everything got interesting. There is yep. no reason for this race to be longer than 20 laps. Make it a 20 lap shootout. Give it to the pole pole winners. That's it. We had a great finish with, mm-hmm. you know, a bunch of damaged cars and five cars in the track. So we don't need a giant field of cars. Just make this thing what it used to be. Sometime, you know, in the in the mid 2000s, they changed this and tried to gimmick it all up and add cars to it and add laps. And 75 laps for this race is just doesn't work. If it's because we want to inc- or want to give another ticket to the fans to come watch a race on the weekend, I don't know if you guys looked at the stands, but nobody's here for this race anymore. Nobody, nobody comes to this race. They all watch it on TV. So can't afford to. You got to pick. You got to choose. The exactly. Daytona. You, you're gonna go. You got to go closer to the Daytona 500. You can't spend two weeks down in Daytona. Yep. Exactly. So run this thing as a prelude to like the truck race on Friday night or something like that, or run it on Saturday night. 
before the cup race. I don't know. Schedule things a little bit closer together. Maybe qualify on Wednesday and run this race Wednesday night and then do the duels on Thursday. Condense the weekend down, but cut this race down to 20 laps like it used to be. Have some fun. It's a chance for these guys to get out on the track. It's an, you know, it's an appetizer for us to get out, get, get a chance to see cars on the track. This stretching it out is just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I'm That's, good with that. So, um, one other new thing, and I use air quotes that we got to see this weekend is we got to see Fox's new broadcast crew, which their new broadcast crew is pretty much just a cut down version of their old broadcast crew. So we had, uh, Jeff Gordon and Mike joy in the booth, um, Gordon got a lot of criticism for botching the call in the last lap, thinking that Denny Hamlin was on the lead lap. And then, uh, there was a video of, from Amy, uh, of junior cheering for the race in his living room, watching it. And he made the same mistake. So everybody who loves junior and doesn't like Gordon, there you go. <laughs> they both did it. Um, and I think all of us were thinking the same thing. I mean, it's, it happens. No biggie. Um, one well, there's I, only a handful of cars on the track when you're supposed to. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, I thought they did a good job. I liked the dynamic in the booth. I liked the fact that DW wasn't there. It felt a lot less dumbed down of a you broadcast. Could te- you know what though? You could tell there were moments and I was actually looking for it. There were moments where Jeff and Mike, there was like dead air <laughs> a little bit. And it was, it was like, they were waiting for DW to chime in. <laughs> yeah. could, did you not, did you not notice that? No, I, I mean, I, I heard it. I heard it. I felt sure. like, yeah, I felt like there was, they, you know, it's going to take them a little bit of an, of, of adjusting, yeah. you know, to go to the two man game, not the, not the three. So the one I wanted to bring up and you and I agreed on this on Sunday, but as I've thought about it and listened to people talk about it, I've changed my opinion on it. So Michael Waltrip was a pit reporter. So sort of this weekend, um, mostly interviewing drivers in the garage or interviewing people in the garage and interviewing drivers after wrecks. Um, James, you were not a fan of Michael Waltrip doing this. Oh, he was brutal. I was not a fan at first either. I'll get into it. Yeah. So go ahead and tell me why you didn't like it. And I'll agree with you for a minute and then say why I changed my mind. Because It's a damn clown show <laughs> and I, it drives me crazy. It's distracting <laughs> from anything else that's going on in the race because he's so bad at what he's doing. <laughs> he's a distraction. He's annoying and he just is not good at it. And I, I don't understand it. He has such a lack of professionalism and the, and the role that he has that it takes away from the coverage of the race. And it's terrible. It's just terrible. I don't, it's not funny. It's not professional and he needs to go. There you go. Wow. I, you know, James, I really wish that you would be a little bit more vocal and uh, (laughs) really tell me how you feel. It's it don't I mean it is a dang clown show. I was hardly listening to anything he was saying because it was he was it was just jargon. He was just he was in the way in the garage. He was out of breath, huffing and puffing. Just it's just a mess, just a complete mess. When you have real professional broadcasters out there that do an, a great job, the Shannon Spakes of the world and Jamie Littles and Steve, or well you know used to be Steve Burns back in the day, um, but there's real professionals that do a really good job and don't take away from the broadcast. They add to the broadcast and he is a detriment. He is a negative impact on the broadcast. Okay. I agree. However, here's where he, here's where he turned me. I was trying to find the audio clip, but I can't find it. Um, here's where he turned me. And this is what made me change my mind. Um, when Kyle Bush was interviewed after that wreck, if Shannon Spake would have interviewed him after that wreck, what answer would she have gotten from Kyle? Because Michael asked him about the wreck and Kyle gave a one word answer. Would Spake have gotten any more than that? She wouldn't have. She wouldn't have. No, nobody would have gotten another word out of him, but Michael got him to talk. And Kyle actually gave a good coherent interview after a wreck, after being wrecked out of a race. Hear me. Let me fight back on that. (laughs) Let's Michael Waltrip do that exact same interview when Kyle Busch is wrecked out of the race after leading with 10 laps to go. Well, we'll we'll get to see it. We'll get to see it. I think he's got a better chance than anybody else or than a lot of people. Getting anything out of Kyle Busch that anybody else would. So one this was the Bush clash, he wasn't going to say a word. So one thing that there's been a big push with. Um, in NASCAR is that the drivers enjoy talking Well, they don't enjoy talking to anybody after a wreck, but they are more comfortable talking to some talking to a driver after a wreck than they are a reporter. 
Um, they're more, you know, the drivers have been in their shoes. They know what they're dealing with. They know the questions to ask. They know the questions not to ask. And so this is something we're going to see more of. And whether Michael Waltrip's the right person for it or not, I, we can argue that all day. I, you know, maybe I, I need to I need to witness it again because I was annoyed during the broadcast. And then afterwards, I started thinking about it and I really kind of enjoyed it. He actually got really good reviews online. I don't know if you saw any of that, but people were really I, excited about his role online. Yeah, um, good. I mean, he, people were loving it on Reddit, which everybody in Reddit hates everything. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh you know, we've got, you know, Regan Smith, we've got, you know, Parker Kligerman, these guys that do the interviews now when the when the drivers wreck out. Um, we're going to see a lot more of that because the drivers are more comfortable with it. So yeah. Parker Kligerman, somebody who actually has worked at his craft, <laughs> become good at it. Yes. <laughs> Regan Smith, the same. He <sighs> actually takes a, um, a journalistic approach to his craft as well. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, I, one thing that they did talk about on Reddit, though, that might is... be the angriest. That might be the angriest I get on the podcast all year. <laughs> and they were starting off. They're starting off the season with, with me angry at Michael Waltrip. People, Thanks, Eric. People on, people on Reddit did suggest taking up a collection for a shampoo and a haircut, though, for Waltrip. Well, tell them I, I, I texted you. Get on the dang treadmill, dude. <laughs> Can't walk through the garage. Without all the right. Bella. And the dog. Bella, Bella knows. Yes. Bella is with you on the Michael Waltrip hate. Thank you, Bella. She's really fired up. What do you got? Uh... She's popping Somebody out knocked... the window. I just I just muted the mic so I could yell at her, and it didn't work, obviously. She's the best. <sighs> All right, one more thing from the Clash, uh, and then we can move on from it. Did this Clash show us anything um, that we can expect on Sunday? Did we learn anything from this race for Sunday? Denny Hamlin's really good, and I think we already knew that, but... He's really good at these racetracks. Yeah. I know he didn't win and he was a lap down and all that stuff, but he makes so many good moves. He's very smart. It's just reinforced. I think, uh, Eric, I think he's past Brad Kozlowski as my Speedway uh, favorite. Yeah, I could see that. I could certainly I mean, see that. Brad was the, I thought Brad was, you know, kind of in a class of his own, but um, Denny's got the two Daytona 500. So, yeah. He, you don't really need you don't really need my input. He's that, got but. the Daytona 500 winner in his living room, man. That's yeah. That's all you got to say. And the other one, and the other one's gonna about to go to the NASCAR Hall of Fame to sit there in uh, Joe Gibbs's um, uh, whatever that's things called that the display yeah that, uh, down there. So yeah, um, he, he's really good. I I'm always I was just impressed watching him. You know, he was trying things, making moves. He was he actually out there being purposeful on right. what he was doing. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Yep. Um, the only thing I learned, uh, first of all, I don't think, uh, I don't think we learned much for Sunday. I think, you know, we're going to see this sort of thing on Sunday, but in a much more minor, um, way. Um, yeah. we won't, it won't, it'll be a crash fest at the end, but it's not going to be to this level. It'll be a lot of riding around beforehand. And then all the excitement will be at the end. Like we generally see, um, as far as, who performed well, first of all, you know, at the last 20 laps when it really mattered, there was nobody left anyway. So you really couldn't yeah. tell anything from that. Um, I don't, I don't think it showed us anything. No, it didn't show us. I... One thing I did learn from it though, is that two things that NASCAR needs to look at in the rules. First damaged vehicle policy, policy sucks because if the damaged vehicle policy was in place for this race, Eric Jones wouldn't have won that race. Yeah. Two, for God's sakes, I get it that it's an advantage when the red flag comes out and the drivers can work on their cars during the red flag, but let them work on the cars during the red flag for Pete's sakes. <laughs> I have no problem with it. Yeah, they get to do it in this race. They get to do it in the all-star race. Who cares? Did it really? I mean, again, Eric Jones wouldn't have won that race without that opportunity, but who cares? Yeah, I'm good with it. <sighs> all right, so let's move on from the clash. We had all kinds of racing so far this week. Um, to start out, let's talk about the Daytona 500, which we get to get to on Sunday. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. puts it on the pole with a new team. Uh, JTD, JTG, dang it, I'm sitting there thinking Doherty so I can get that it. out. And I got the G wrong. So JTG Doherty Racing um, gets their Daytona 500 pole. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. sits on it basically with uh, pretty much a Hendrick car, right? I mean. Hendrick, yeah, Hendrick power plant <laughs> under the hood. No, JTG builds their own cars. That's though. right. Yeah, it's a it's a it's yeah. a Hendrick motor, no, not a. Yeah, it's a Hendrick motor though. Hendrick power plant on the inside. So yeah, that's, um, yeah. I, is he a threat 
for Sunday? No. I mean, a legit, a legit threat? No, you don't think so? No, I don't think so. Um, I, I mean, he, he is. I, everybody's a threat, I think. And if, if you can if you can draft at this place, you, everybody's a threat. Yeah. Um, and we know Stenhouse is good at restricted plate tracks. I think this team is going to be a lot better. Um, I think they continue to get better and better and better. Um, yeah. Honestly, I think, and I think we talked about it last year, I think the Stenhouse Jr., Chris Buescher swap is one of those moves that this is a good move I mean, everybody benefits from this move. Mm-hmm. Everybody does. He needed a new scene. He needed some new scenery and this. He's probably the best driver they've ever had in there. Oh yeah. Stable. I mean, Chris Buescher is really good and he'll, he'll do good things in the future. Probably. Right. Um, he's, he's he'll in the get, right place though with solid. Roush. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, he'll, he'll be a solid driver just like Ricky. I, you yep. know, Ricky crashes and he, he's got a bad reputation for it crashing out and stuff, but he, you know, you don't win championships in the, in the second tier of, of NASCAR for for nothing. Well, so he's, he's Dave, pretty good. Dave Moody said it yesterday. Somebody was ripping on Stenhouse yesterday, and he was no, it's easy. Moody it's easy was right. Rip. He's got a bad reputation from one race. There was pretty, one yeah. race that he caused three wrecks in, and that's all anybody can remember. Yeah, and he's his gonna, name turns into Recky Spinhouse pretty easily. Yeah, that's my. That's <laughs> I like to use that. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's gonna be fine, and uh. You know, shout out to Alex Bowman though, his third year in a row on the front row at yeah. the Daytona 500. Dude, yeah. <laughs> dude, dude knows how to hold it down on the yellow line when it when it matters most. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, but I mean, good for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Um, yeah. No better way to go to another team after you kind of got booted from yours and stick your you know middle finger up yeah. at him and win the pole. Yeah, especially when you have to switch manufacturers too. That's always yeah. that's going to be nice. You know, you're like, hey, if you would have given me one of these power plants under my hood uh, on your team, maybe we could have done some stuff. You know, do I, I, do I, had think... a, I had a buddy, I had a buddy text me and said, Hey, Ricky's on the pole. And I was like, it's, it's probably the most useless trophy in NASCAR, <laughs> right. but, but nonetheless, he's, he's got it. So, um, Stenhouse, uh, you, uh, is he a threat Sunday? He's a threat. Is he a major threat? No. However, Stenhouse is going to be dangerous this year because he has a chip on his shoulder. He's got something to prove and he's in good equipment. Yep, and so. he's gonna be good in the he's gonna be good in the short tracks too. I think. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I think he's gonna have he's got a better car than he had at oh, Roush yeah. right now. Definitely. I think he's gonna be in pretty good shape. I think he's if you break down the field into a pyramid, he's like in that second tier of of drivers who I who I think you know, you, you, you know if you're betting in Vegas, he'd be yeah. a nice he'd be a nice pickup. Yeah, he would. Um, the ARCA series kicked off their, uh, national touring series season, um, with, uh, with the race at Daytona on Saturday, Haley Deegan finishes second place, uh, survives the big giant wreck that took out Natalie Decker and everybody else yeah. and, uh, sticks behind, um, who the heck won the race? I don't have the result for me. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Um, who won for the second year in a row in at Daytona. Um, pushed him and, uh, and finished a, a comfortable second place. Could have tried to make a move. Wouldn't have worked. Um, did the right thing by staying, in, staying in line. Um, I don't think it really says a whole lot about Haley, except that she can hold a car straight, which is great. Um, good mm-hmm. showing for her, for her first, you know, big track race. Um, definitely want to see more from her over the rest of the season and see how it goes. But, uh, but she did what she needed to do. Got herself a second place finish and finished yeah. most importantly. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of hoping this isn't a Bubba Wallace type thing for her season where yeah. she finished second at the Daytona race and then everything kind of peters out. I think she'll be she's going to be strong on the be, short tracks too. Yeah, she'll be pretty good. She's, and she's uh, you know the, she's in good equipment, so the in, yeah. the in the Arca that matters a lot. Yeah, yeah, she's going to be just fine. She'll have a decent. I think she's going to have a decent campaign. Probably yeah. a you know top eight in points would yeah. be pretty would be pretty respectable for her. So yeah, she's got a lot of learning to do yet, but she'll get there. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I saw a friend of mine who I'm not going to say who it is because I don't want to out him, even though it's kind of out who he is. Um, he's a past guest on the show. Um, anyway, he mentioned that he was going to be participating in um, he was going to be announcing the uh, Arca Menards West Series race from New Smyrna Raceway. And so I did a little research on the NBC Gold Track Pass to see what it costs um, to get that package for the season. It's only twenty bucks for the season, so I picked that up the other day. Got to watch the Arkham Menards West Series race um, from New Smyrna. It was excellent. Um, he did a great job calling the race. It was a tough race to call because there was a lengthy red flag in the middle of it and a lot of technical difficulties. Um, but it was an exciting race. It was fun to watch. I've never watched cars at New Smyrna, so that was pretty cool. Lots of really cool stuff coming. 
from that track pass if you guys want to pick it up. It's 20 bucks for the year. Um, NBC Gold. It's all streaming. You get um, some practices for Xfinity and trucks. Um, I don't. I can't remember if Cup's in there or not. Cup uh, will be probably when they pick up the uh, when they pick up the season halfway. Right. And then, yeah. but you get the you get the Arkham Knights series East and West. You get um, a bunch of the national Arca races as well. Um, you get the NASCAR Penny series, which is the Canadian series, the old cast car series. Um, and all kinds of other little stuff too, like the whole week. Like right now, they are airing racing from New Smyrna Raceway. Um, it's it's cool. It's really great. So check that out. It's twenty bucks. I mean, crap. That's that's nothing. To get it for the season. So it's yeah. it's worth it. Worth the money. There you go. Wow. And there was a heck of a wreck. Um, Tanner Gray <laughs> hit the wall and went up on the fence and almost flipped down the front stretch. So oh my gosh, it's crazy. But uh, good racing out there. So it was kind of like the uh, it was kind of like the shootout in that it was really quiet until about you know, the last quarter of the race, and then it got crazy. So uh, with that, let's talk some news, James. We've got a little bit this week. Um, first of all, sounds like, and this doesn't surprise us a whole lot because we've heard some talk about this, but uh, it's really looking like we're going to be talking uh, some street racing and NASCAR in the future. Um, NASCAR really showing their interest in um, street racing. Adam Stern tweets that Steve Phelps effectively confirmed that NASCAR is exploring a street race around a football stadium, saying there are opportunities that we are exploring right, that might seem radically different. Apparently, Soldier Field and LA Coliseum are among those mentioned. Um, it was also, I think, a question in one of the surveys that they sent out, one of the fan council surveys. What do we think of that? Uh, I'm skeptical about the street racing yeah. but i don't mind if they slap it on the schedule i like to see him try not, it yeah i'm not opposed to it i'm not opposed to it. i'm skeptical that it'll work very well i think belle I think, isle is a terrible place for a cup race but i'd love to see him try it there yeah i um they won't but i'd love to see I, it. yeah fans are clamoring for it and i just i don't know if you've ever watched street racing it's not the most exciting form of racing unless but, it's the penny series well penny yeah, series we'll is good yeah, we'll see. I don't know. You guys want side know. by side racing. This isn't going to be it. Yeah, it's not. I know. I know. It just doesn't feel like NASCAR racing to me. But again, I'm not opposed to it. We've done other things. And if we got to mix up the schedule, this is a good way to do it. So I'm, I'm good with that. I'm pretty optimistic about 2021 and see, seeing some changes. I think yeah. I think there's been a lot put in line with this NASCAR buying ISC and all that stuff that. Yeah. Going to open us up for some options. Yep. Um, so uh, Jimmy Johnson, not going to be done racing after this season. I don't think this is a surprise for anybody either. I'm um, going to be done with the Cup Series, but talking may run some IndyCar races, some IMSA races, maybe some other stuff. Um, apparently, Indy 500 has been nixed by the wife. Yeah, he won't. He won't do fast ovals. <laughs> yes, that's correct. But uh, but you could very well see him in some IndyCars next year, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I want to see him scattered scattered about. Yeah. I'd be I'd be all about that. That'd be awesome. Definitely. I mean, yeah. he's certainly, you know, he's he's spent his entire career concentrating specifically on the Cup Series. Um, you know, he's kind of like the anti Tony Stewart. Um, he didn't even run. I mean, ran a couple Xfinity races and it was pretty rare. So, um, yeah, cool to see him getting a chance to branch out. And I guess, you know, it it seems even though it's Jimmy struggled the past couple of years, it almost seems like he's retiring a little early. But if you're going to retire early, this is the way to do it. Go out and have some fun in some other series. Yeah, I always thought we'd see more Jeff Gordon racing, and he just hasn't done it. I mean, well, he, did he got the sucked into the TV contract, and I think that was the end of that. Yeah, he did the 24 hours um, once, but we haven't seen much of him since then. And, and same with Dale Jr. I mean, we see him for one Xfinity race a year. Um, but Dale Jr.'s got a little more of a special circumstance with his head injury history, right. too. So, um, yeah, Jimmy's going to be healthy and um, – was the best driver in the world for a long time. So yeah, let's see what he can do elsewhere. I want to see how he stacks up. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Um, last year we had a lot of talk about NASCAR being for sale, but apparently it's not anymore. Um, sale of NASCAR is absolutely, and that's in quotes, not in the foreseeable future. According to president Steve Phelps, he says the France family is not interested in selling NASCAR at all during mm -hmm. a Fox interview with Fox business. We'll um, see what the next TV deal brings. Then we'll, <laughs> we'll see what, uh, yeah. We'll see how how for sale it really is. Yeah, I think the restructuring that they've done at the top is is good. Um, we've seen some positive yeah. changes in the right direction. Yep. Uh, I'm happy to see it. I'm I'm been nervous all along about the thought of NASCAR being sold. 
you never know what you're going to get when that happens. So, um, yeah, the France family, for one thing, is you know what you're going to get. They yep. are consistent. If at, and if not for, you know, if it's a fault or not, sometimes is, is debatable, but they are, you know, they are a steady hand. Yep. Le, le, more so now with Brian, uh, not, not in the fold. Right. Yeah. Um, so this, uh, this weekend, if you were planning on flying over the Daytona 500, probably not going to be a real great idea because we will have a no fly zone over the Daytona International Speedway. No drones. And also a no drone zone. Uh, U.S. Secret Service tweets out, uh, ladies and gentlemen, start your engines, but not your drones. Uh, the yes. president of the United States, Donald Trump, coming to the Daytona 500 this weekend. And that's all Wait. I'll say. <laughs> Yeah, we don't want to get into politics on this podcast. Yeah, with that, that with that, let's move on to our predictions for the 2020 season, James. <laughs> Hold on, I, I do have one. I mean, <laughs> Go ahead. I have one news item. Yes, that sorry. I, I, I did bring up really quick. I saw it before we started the podcast. I should have put it in the notes. Uh, uh, Adam Stern reported that if NASCAR track, this is on the table, not not a done deal. But moving forward, if NASCAR tracks do not sell out 70% of their grandstands, they may face penalties. Yep, I saw that too. I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm glad you're adding yeah, that. I just, yeah, and I had to retweet it, and I was, of course, snarky about it. But <laughs> um, just, I don't know if that's a great, I don't know if that's a great idea or a good idea or what, but it's an idea. Yeah. Um, I just, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of penalties or um, more grandstands coming down. You NASCAR know, I don't know. going to penalize itself. Yeah, why would you penalize? I don't know. <laughs> Unless this is specifically at I, at SMI tracks. Yeah. Which it I could be. Know. There's tracks like Bristol that have a lot of seats that have not removed seating. That Bristol Spring Race is by, by yeah. not even 50% full. No. And I just can't believe that they would penalize their exactly. track. Exactly. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. What are they gonna do? Take dates away from them? How do you penalize a track? I don't know. I don't. I think this is one of those announcements that yeah, it's interesting, but I don't think it means anything to us. Yeah, I don't if, know. If they take seats out, okay, whatever. They're not filling them anyway, so who cares? Yeah, yeah. So. I don't know. It's just interesting. I just found that. It's like the old NFL rule where they would black out games. Yeah, if they weren't stupid. Yeah. yeah, really dumb. Yeah. Anyway, All right. I, I thought I'd bring it up. Now we can do our awful predictions. Let's do 2020 predictions. I know James has spent a lot of time preparing for this. Oh, my um, God. As have yeah. I. I think yeah. I spent about... Yeah. I spent about five minutes longer than James in that I spent five minutes getting ready for this. <laughs> yeah. So let's go through our predictions. These are the same questions as last year, except I had to pull one out because we had a question about the new arrow package last year. Um, instead, we have a question about rookie of the year since we have a good rookie class this year. So question number one, and we're in the same order that we did these last year as well, as far as who picks first. Uh, nice. One big gamble. James, what's your one big uh -huh. gamble on the season this year? So last year, didn't I say that De Benedetto would win a race? Was uh, that my big? Game? You might have. I can pull oh, those man. notes up. I know I was. I felt like I was so close when we did our recap. I can't remember if that was the one or not. Okay. Hold on. Big, I, I can pull it up really quick. Big gamble. I'll filibuster. De Benedetto will win a race. Was your big gamble last year? Yeah, man. I was so close to getting that. Dang it. Um, okay. I want to do something that's a big gamble, but is like a safe. <laughs> mine's mine's a pretty safe big. Yeah, mine's. Kind of safe big gamble. There's there's one thing in mind that makes it more of a gamble. Mm, big gamble, big gamble. Um, mm, mm, mm. Do you want me to go? To, do you want me to go to give you a chance to think about yeah, it? Yeah, go ahead. All go right. ahead. So go my ahead. big gamble is involving the rookies. My big gamble is that all three Christopher Bell, Cole Custer, and Tyler Reddick will win a race this year. I like that. I think it's a good one because I think Tyler Reddick probably the least likely to do so because he's in a children's car. Yep. Um, but you know, it's, it's rookies haven't historically been winning races. So it's a pretty big jump to say all three of them. will. all right. This was okay. I've got a really good one. This is a okay. little bit of a reach. Okay. I do like, I do like yours. That's really good. Um, William Byron will make the final four hmm. race for a championship at Phoenix. Wow, that's a good one. Uh huh. I like some of the things that Chevy's been doing in the off season and who better than Chad Knauss and uh, super talented William Byron. I, we have a lot of faith in William on this podcast and he's got to break through at some point. So I want to see him um, racing for a championship. That's really interesting that you say that because it feeds in perfectly to my answer for the next <laughs> one. 
Uh, team to watch for 2020. My team to watch is Hendrick Motorsports because yeah. I believe that they are on the upswing. Um, certainly, you can pick Joe Gibbs because obviously they're going to be excellent. This is the same package they were excellent with last year. Um, the Fords will probably be strong, but I think Hendrick Motorsports is on the right path at the end of last yeah. season. They're going to continue that trend this year. They've got some great drivers. I think we see some improvement out of them this year, which is interesting because one of my predictions later on is going to go against that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who's your team yeah, to watch, got, James? They got a lot of momentum. They do. Motorsports. I, I, and they've got the new body style. I yep. think that they are going to be uh, – they're going to be a problem. I think they're going to be good. There is no um, reason that they would have introduced this new Chevy nose if it wasn't better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, for me, I'm going with Team Penske, and uh, not for good performance reasons. Um, we saw a drop-off. In that in that team last year, we saw a huge sweeping changes to the crews and crew chiefs, and they've got two drivers that are going to be free agents. Uh, Ryan Blaney, his contract's up, and Brad Kozlowski, I think he's going to be moving on at the end of this season. I want to see how this dynamic plays out at Team Penske. I just this is kind of a, tur- a little bit of turmoil heading into the year, and uh, you know, if we saw anything from the cr- from the clash, um, Brad's <laughs> Brad's <laughs> moody. And uh, we'll, yeah. we'll see where it go- we'll see where it goes. But yeah, I they're going to be they're going to be interesting. That's a really interesting take because I would have never taken it any other way than what team do you expect to be strong this year? But I like yeah, the fact I'm that I'm going you, the other way. You went yeah. turmoil. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I think That's... I think it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that team this year. You know, I need you don't want to lose Brian. Yeah, you don't want to lose Brian Blaney, right? Right. You don't want to let him walk. And Brad Kozlowski is a champion, and he's one of the winningest drivers, you know, winningest active drivers we have. You know, you're going to let him walk from the deuce. And, you know, Miller Lite not coming back, you know, only one race this year. There's a lot going on with that team, and it's going to be interesting. I'm noting this in the notes because otherwise we won't remember at the end of the season why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's really good. All right, uh, pick two drivers that made the playoffs last year who won't make it in 2020, Ooh. and then pick two new playoff drivers. Wow. That's good. That's good. Okay. I got the first pick on this one? Yeah, you got first pick. First pick. Okay, okay. Uh, two drivers that'll be out. Um, wow. Wow. Uh, Ryan <laughs> Newman, I think that's that's low-hanging fruit. I That's going to be tough to get him back in. <laughs> So Ryan Newman out, and I'll say uh, I'll say Clint Boyer. He'll okay. fall out as well. Just to note, those were my first two picks as well. Wow, very yes. good. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, Clint Boyer just—he's got to show me something. He finished ninth in the standings last year, though. That's true. Um, but yeah, he's got to show me a little bit. He's got to show me something. It's not and consistent I, I have enough. A, yeah, and I have a hard time knocking out the Hendrick contingent. Yeah. Um. So and then two drivers that are coming in. Uh, Johnson, I think Johnson's coming back in. Um, we saw Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon each make the playoffs in their final seasons. And by God, Jimmy Johnson's going to make the playoffs. Okay. There's no way, no way he misses it. And I will say that we need somebody kind of coming from nowhere. I think Ricky Stenhouse makes his way back into the playoffs. It's a good one. Yeah. I feel like I left one driver out there that you're probably going to take, and I think it might be a better pick than mine, but I'll save Ricky Stenhouse for now. So I cheated a little bit with this, but first of all, I want to say that I think that we could, this might be a very big shakeup year for the, for the playoffs. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, I think somebody's going to, and I went on, I went very, very um, conservative on this, but I think there's going to be somebody big that we don't expect that's going to miss the playoffs this year. I think there has to be because there's too many good names that can get in. There's a lot of good drivers, yeah. So the way I cheated is I didn't pick two. I picked three. Oh. Um, so I picked my three out. I told you Clint Boyer and Ryan Newman. I'm also going to – this goes against what I said earlier. I'm going to pick Alex Bowman as well as Ooh. being out this season. And in, I'm going to agree with you on the Jimmy Johnson – Yep. I had a hard time picking between these two, so I went with both of them. And I think the I think Christopher Bell is going to make it in yep, with a one. with a Joe that's Gibbs one. car. Yep. And I think, you know, Stuart Haas is a great team too, and I think Cole Custer is going to get in. Ooh, you know so, who we didn't you know who we didn't mention? Who's that? Matt 
to Benedetto. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, he's yeah. he's and really he's kind of hanging off of our radar this year, and he probably shouldn't be. Again, he shouldn't be. there he shouldn't be. So I predicted that that all three of the rookies will win a race. That means all three of them are in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna have all three of them in the playoffs. Yeah. We th- we think Jimmy's gonna get in. We think De Benedetto's got a good shot. I'm totally on board with the rookie Stenhouse Jr. I think he's gonna get a restrictor plate race this year at least. Yeah. Um, or a super speedway race. Uh, you know, that's, <laughs> yeah. there's going to be some people left out this year that we're going to go, Oh my God, I can't believe yeah. that they're out. I, I, I you know, I Brad Keselowski could be a good pick for out. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. I, well, I'd be surprised, but yeah. Um, you know, I, with Cole Custer, is he better than what Daniel Suarez was last year? I just, I don't think he will be. I think he will be. And you know why I think he will be? Because I think his performance in the Xfinity series has, been i mean way better than daniel suarez was and i know the xfinity series doesn't always translate over to cup but cole yeah. custer has beat cup drivers in the xfinity series he's been good yeah so very good i think i think he's gonna be yes i think definitely he's gonna be better than daniel suarez was and i think he's equivalent to eric almarola yeah and almarola got a ra- win race win last year so yeah. Well, not last year, two years ago. Yeah, that's right. He, yeah, he went when yeah, he yeah. he made the final. Yeah, he was fifth in points last, uh, two years ago. Right. Yeah. yeah so last I... year, yeah, last year it kind of the wheels fell off when yep. he got in the first round, but um but yeah, no, that's that's a good point, man. Yeah, I don't know. I I still think kind of highly of Daniel Suarez. I just think he got a rough deal last year a little bit, but oh, I, agree. I don't know. I think he's I think he's set up for failure this year. So yeah, he's in trouble. Yep. He's in trouble this year. Yeah, he's uh he's the reverse Matt De Benedetto this year. Kind of. Yeah, I I can't believe we're not we haven't said much about De Benedetto because I, I think he's going to be strong. Yeah, he could win Bristol. Right? Yeah. I mean, easily. So he could win the Daytona 500. <laughs> he's going to be tough, man. He's got a good. He's got a good. He's that got the best car has he, won the 500 before. He's got the best <laughs> equipment he's ever had. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, if he's going to do something, this is it. This is his chance. Yeah, if he doesn't do it this year, he's not going to do it. Yeah. He he's not going to get the chance to do it. Yeah, um, he's in his window. He's in his window right now and it might be a two it might be a two-year window, but yeah. he's in a Yeah, he's in well, a, he's in a window. And that window is coming at the perfect time in his career too because he is ready for it. Yeah, yeah, he showed us something last year. He was really tough. He was a tough out last year. Yep. Um who will win rookie of the year? I get first pick on this one and I am going to take the easy way out and let me make sure that I'm picking the one I picked earlier. Yes. Christopher bell will win. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Really going on Uh, a limb on that one. Yeah. I'll go Quinn Huff. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Uh, No, uh, man, that's. And and you can pick the same as me. That's I was going to say Christopher bell. I, I, I'm just going to stay chalk on that one. Yeah. I think that team's going to be better than they've ever been. And they've got the best driver they've ever had. So, so what do we think? Uh, chances are Christopher Bell, Cole Custer, then uh, Tyler Reddick. Probably, yeah. I think yeah. Cole Custer's got he, Cole Custer's got the probably the best equipment because it's all in house at Stuart Haas. Yeah, Christopher that's true. Bell's Christopher Bell. I mean, I know they're that's basically a Gibbs car, but um, Christopher Bell's right there with him. And then, um, yeah, Tyler Tyler Reddick's a great driver. It's just Childress doesn't do much. So, yeah. What will be the re- best race of 2020? James, you get to go first. Boy. I don't know. <laughs> I have a really I have a great pick and I think I'm going to be right, but I'm uh, you're it's going to you're not going to be expecting it until I say it and you're going to go, "Oh yeah." I thought New Hampshire was the best race last year, <laughs> which completely shocked me. Right. Um I'll say uh Boy. Watch you pick the one that I have. I'm not optimistic about Phoenix. I really I'm not, not either as a final, even with I, the changes. I, yeah. I, but I'll say, um, we're going to have some drama late in the season. I'll go fall Martinsville, okay. especially with the rules package switching back. I think we'll have some better performance on the short track. And that's so not I the will, night race, right? The night race is the early one spring right? race. I yeah. believe you're correct. Yes. Okay. Um, again, you're going to go, Oh yeah, totally on this one. Um, but the final race of the regular season is the Coke zero sugar 400 at Daytona. Oh yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, and I think great. that will be the best race of the season. I think there's going to be a lot of drama there and it's a restrictor a super speedway. I think it's just going to be nuts. Oh, that's a great one. <laughs> Told Dang you. it. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Uh, that pick. I what, like that pick. What will be the worst race of 2020? 
I get the first pick on this one, and I'm going to say the worst race is the one that's going to feel as long as its name, and that is the Big Machine Vodka 400 at the Brickyard, powered by Florida Georgia Line. <laughs> oh, man. I'll tell you what, it, it's probably not going to be the worst race, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to put this one down. It's okay. the ra- it's the, it's the race at Homestead because <laughs> it's going to make me sad. Yeah. You know, we're not racing for a championship there. And I just, I am going to miss that track so much. It's probably going to be a decent race, but Homestead not having that championship drama is going to be such a letdown. It That's will be my- really interesting to see. It's also a day race. Yeah. Um, it'll be right. interesting to see what that track can bring has that track been so good because it's the final race of the season or has it been that good because it's that good i hope it's a great race it's still going to be a letdown but i just i wish it was the championship race still i love that track so much we've kind of you and i both kind of agree that it's like the perfect nascar track it's it's the old atlanta basically yeah yeah which put on some great races as well um so we'll see if it really is the greatest nascar track yeah, yeah. Um, who will be our final four? James gets the first pick on this one. Oh, well, I already said William Byron, so I have to put him in. Okay. Uh, and I'm not picking against Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch will be in. And I want Denny Hamlin in there. And I like, I, I know I'm not super high on Team Penske, but I like the same that. As me. I want Logano and Paul Wolf with, I just like that combination. So, okay. So this is no fun because we both picked the same final four. <laughs> did you pick, what, did you put William Byron in there too? No. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. No. Who, so do I have okay. William Byron? Uh, oh, I have Harvick in. Okay, good. We aren't oh. the same. I picked Harvick. Yeah. I had a hard time saying no to Kevin Harvick, but he's Harvick, at, you know, that, Harvick signed at that new, age. He signed the new contract. He's ready to race some more. Yeah, he's going to be – yeah, but he's just at that age, man, where it's not going to – it's – it's and the fact that he's got an extension going, it's just not going to be a pretty ending for Kevin Harvick. Yeah. And I feel bad saying that. He's still going to win races this year, and he's going to be good. But um, I'll take Denny Hamlin because he's – he's at that – he's at the peak, man. Yeah. Age 39, the old David Smith rule. I agree, and that's why I picked him as my 2020 champion. Ooh. I'm going Denny this year. I'm saying he gets it done. All right. I would like to pick Denny Hamlin, but I won't. Uh, I will say that Kyle Busch oh, man. will win his uh, third championship and finally surpass Tony Stewart in the top 10 NASCAR drivers of all time list. You just sealed the deal. Kyle will win the championship now just because you picked him and I didn't. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I would like to pick Denny Hamlin. I really have a good feeling about Denny Hamlin. I just that that race, that championship race was such a bummer. Because Denny, I felt like Denny had a little bit of a destiny thing going in isn't, 2019. Isn't Denny good at Phoenix? He's good. He won Phoenix. Yeah, he yeah, of must so is win. Kyle. I mean, yeah, but yeah, when it comes down to it, I'll take Kyle Busch. And Kevin Harvick, I mean, he's in your final. He's yeah, in your final actually, race. all of my final four, except for Joey Logano, is good at Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be tough to beat Kyle Busch again. I just. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he's at the point now where he's going to yeah. start winning. And this this arrow package is still perfect for him. It's he's still driving for Joe Gibbs, which is still the best team out there right now. Um, Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's going to be tough for him, but it's going to come down to that one last race. So, yeah. And we do have, you know, Denny won the fall race at at Phoenix, but we do have different rules coming into Phoenix and we're, we're switching things back around. So I'll take, uh, I'll take the KB show for his, uh, for his third championship going back to back. Nice. I like that. It's going to be tough to beat him, man, for the next couple of years. He's got a chance to get up to – I think Kyle Busch could end his career with about four or five cups by the time he's all said and done. So this is his chance to to kind of make up for lost time. Yeah, I agree. All right, Daytona 500 this weekend. We go back to regular season racing. Uh, James, get the first pick. Who is your winner of the 2020 Daytona 500? It's, let me just draw a number out of a hat. <laughs> I know, right? I don't have this one figured out yet either. I'm still – uh, I'm looking at the interest now to be fair for our dark horse. Um, we have to go with guys who have already made the show because the, the duels are tomorrow. So yes. we don't, we won't, uh, we won't be watching Correct. or we're doing this before the duels, but, um, for my pick Ooh, to win, just help to, me actually, yeah, I pick to win it all on Sunday. Boy. Oh boy. Denny Hamlin. I don't, I would like to pick him, but there are odds against him. He's had such so much success. He's bound to crash out. Right. Yeah. Um, 
put me down for you know who's do you know what i'm gonna go with eric jones okay that's a good one um for, for the record i am going to try to remember to keep track of these this year oh and, i like that and what we're gonna do is whoever whoever finishes closest to the front each week gets a point i like it's that. nice and simple so if 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 Eric Jones, your pick finishes above whoever I pick, then you get a point. So you're and you are going to track this. Yes, I will try really hard to remember to track this. <laughs> All right. It's man. quite possible I will be doing it during the show every week because I will forget to do this in advance. But Fantastic. that's that's my plan is I should actually add it to the notes, the template. So I remember to do it. But yes. Um, yeah. All right. So my pick to win the Daytona 500, I'm going to go against everything that I think I even said last week. And I am going to say that the only trophy left, man, Kyle Busch wins his first Daytona 500. Wow. This weekend. Yeah. That's the one thing he needs on the resume. And you know, when that guy needs, when he, when he just can't win that race, when it just looms, they don't usually get it. And so the deck is stacked against Kyle, but I'm going with him anyway. Hmm. And for my dark horse, because I get to go first on the dark horse, I you, James, you made me think of it because you mentioned the the duels. Mm-hmm. Um, I am going to go with who I think would probably be the funnest Daytona 500 champion, and I'm going to go Brendan Gone as my. Dark oh my horse. god, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> in the show. He is in the show. He uh, he was joking with Dave on on Sirius the other day about how many times he's won the Daytona 490. <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh and dave said you know he's got a picture he's got photographic evidence of brendan gone leading at talladega last year um of course brendan gone was upside down <laughs> <laughs> but he was leading so yes yes nonetheless okay um mm-mm. he's not locked in the show is ross chastain locked in the show um i don't think so because brendan gone and uh uh, Justin Haley are the two that are I locked know in, I, I believe. I know who I want. Okay. Because he's already locked in the show. David Reagan. Okay. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. It could be his last start. Maybe not. Who knows? He's yeah. Back. Okay. That's a good one. All right. Um, anything else that we need to talk to talk about the Daytona 500 this weekend? Oh, just enjoy it. Yeah. I don't know. It's the, uh, it's such a great day. The Daytona 500 is really a great day. It is. Yeah. I'm excited. It's- I'm excited about all of it. Um, I have hockey games, both Friday and Saturday night. So I will be missing. I won't be watching the truck series and Xfinity series races live, but I will be catching them after the fact. Um, probably most excited about the truck race. Truck race is always good at Daytona. Um, I mean, other than the 500, I'm excited about the 500. I can't wait for that. So I'm um, yeah. just excited to get the season going. Heck yeah, man. It's fun. It's fun. It's always, I, I just, it's just a great day. Daytona 500 day. Yeah. It's Daytona day. Daytona day. Jeff Glock. Yep. Exactly. No, it's, it's always something I've always looked forward to. And it's, you know, I don't know. You spend all day in front of the TV, which isn't, which isn't so bad. And you have an excuse to be in front of the TV all day. <laughs> so my schedule right now is open on Sunday and I have not addressed it at home yet on whether I'm going to actually be able to watch the race or not. Um, I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm strongly hoping that it's, it's in the plans of the entire household to allow me to watch it on Sunday, but I'm not optimistic. <laughs> Leave me alone family. Uh, but yeah, we have, the boys don't have a hockey game. There's no spirit game this weekend. It's, it's open. Um, which means I'm sure it's been filled with something you that I'm not aware of yet. <laughs> I know, right? yourself <sighs> so I, anyway i'm optimistic that i'll get to watch it live that's that's my goal so um fantasy league if you guys haven't signed up sign up james how do they do that just go to the space super space speedway on nascar.com fantasy league and we had some people sign up so thank you we have a we have a little bit bigger league this year nice um our friend baron speedway is on there awesome cool we got denny the many i have an idea of who that might be okay. i haven't looked at it but uh, and then uh, some of our familiar faces are back again. So, uh, yeah, Ranger, he's he's back. So nice. Come kick our butts. Well, we'll take it. Cool. I'm excited about that. Yeah, yeah everybody's back. Uh, James, got any shout outs? Uh, n- no, I don't. I do not. I have one and it's not really a shout out, but I just wanted to bring it up because we missed it last week in our news. 
and I don't know how we missed it, but it was quite a disservice uh, by us as NASCAR fans and a NASCAR podcast to not mention that John Andretti passed away. Oh my gosh! Um, we did yeah, not do bad. a tribute to John Andretti, and that's it's, you know shame, shame on us for doing that. Um, very sad to hear John Andretti passed away. We talked about it previously. Um, he was suffering from from illness, and uh, um, you know a big bummer. Obviously, anytime we lose somebody in the sport. Uh, John Andretti was, you know, a major part of NASCAR and other series as well. Um, Shoot, he drove drag races, <laughs> yeah. and raced at Indy, and yeah. I mean, the Andretti name is synonymous with motorsports. Obviously, no, no, yeah. Not, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> doesn't need to be said. Yeah, if you if you if you are familiar with motorsports at all, you've heard the names Petty and Andretti. You know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, big bummer that uh, that we lost him um, over the past couple of weeks. Um, you know, condolences to his family and everything. Uh, obviously, John Andretti got uh, got the win in the 43 car, right? He won in the 43, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he um, did, and the 98. Yep, couple couple cups. One Daytona, wins. the uh, yeah, the Pepsi old Pepsi 400 back then, but yeah. Yep. So, um, nice long career in NASCAR, and uh, it was fun to watch when he was racing with us. And unfortunately, we expected it to happen. Uh, it's always a bummer when it does, though. So, mm-hmm. um, again, condolences with the family. Uh, with that, you know, we kind of started this trend of being uh, very somber at the end of the show. So, yeah, we're uh, doing a good job of that. Thanks. Yeah, it's great. Great. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Anything else, James? Did I miss anything? I did see that, John. They did one final lap at Indianapolis. Yeah, that was really Earth. cool. That was really cool. Yeah. I just and it was, was raining awesome. fitting, fittingly. Yeah. I beautiful. mean, yeah. Then they had the scoring pylons, you know, had his name and yeah, stuff on there. That was awesome. so cool. What a neat tribute tribute to do the final yeah, lap. It was Indy. awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, James, if people want to tweet with you during the 500 this weekend, where can they do that? Uh, at James Cush on Twitter. You can find me at T Super Speedway on Twitter. I will uh, be tweeting if I happen to be watching the race live. Um, you can find the podcast on Facebook at facebook.com slash the super speedway. If you want more of the podcast, you can visit our website at www.thesuperspeedway.com. You'll find uh, show notes on there, links to articles we've discussed, past coverage of races, future coverage of races as we get to those this season. Um, and all kinds of stuff. You never know what might show up there. Um, pretty much the podcast though. So if you want to see old episodes, we've got old episodes going back for like, I think all of last season and potentially into the season before. I don't remember when I started paying so they could stay up, but there's a bunch of old episodes on there. If you want to check them out, there's some great interviews on there. Uh, we interviewed the orange cone back in the past. We, uh, James mentioned Baron Speedway. I chatted with him, um, at Chicago land last year. Uh, let's see who else has been on. We've talked to all kinds of drivers, guys. I've got to sit down with, uh, you know, ask Jimmy Johnson, a bunch of questions at Michigan last year. So those interviews are on there as well. Um, so check it out. The super speedway.com. Um, if you want to subscribe to the podcast, you can find the podcast on Apple podcasts, Google play and soundcloud, wherever you found us today. We hope that you subscribe and continue to listen. Uh, if you want to become a part of the show, you want to get on the show. Um, you want to just help us out, get to the track, uh, get equipment, whatever, um, give us some support. You can become a patron at patreon.com slash the super speedway. The 2020 season is finally here. We go to Daytona International Raceway this weekend for the Daytona 500. Can't get any better than that. It is race time. NASCAR season is here. Um, that's it, guys. We'll be back next week to talk about the 500 and pre- preview uh, race number two on the season. Until then, everybody, let's go racing. Uh-huh.